some slides are similar, and I'm going to repeat it anyways. Because first, they want to introduce the network of a digital heritage. We're working uh, towards implementing uh, the national uh, digital heritage strategy. Uh, and its aim is to increase the social value of the cultural heritage information maintained uh, by libraries like the National Library, the archives like the National Archive, museums, and other cultural institutions like Sound of Vision. Um, the NDE strategy starts uh, from the end user perspective and encourages institutions uh, to provide digital heritage information that's more visible, usable, and sustainable. We have an NDE program, and that's about building a strong cross uh, sector network. So, really uh, connecting all the, the heritage organizations on the level of expertise and information. And linked data is regarded as one of the enabling technologies. We're guided by some design principles to uh, go to a discovery infrastructure. And with this, we really want to rethink the network, uh, maximize the data at the source. So no uh, more copying of data, but data at the source. Refer to data instead of copying. So we can build uh, portals as dynamic views uh, based on a common interconnected data layer. We apply linked data uh, principles, use web-centric uh, technologies, and where possible, uh, decentralized and distributed technologies. So going something deeper to linked data, we all know the five-star model by Tim Berners-Lee about linked data. And our talk is mainly about the five star linking your data to other uh, data to provide context. That's really Im important. So, to give you an example of using linked data in a network, on the left you see some uh, creative works, two paintings, and a book. And on the left, uh, the artist Van Gogh. So, our, there are links, of course, between all those uh, entities. Uh, the painting. Uh, or Rembrandt is of Van Gogh is the creator of the paintings, and the book is about Van Gogh. So you can make those links and give real meaning to, to these uh, links with linked data. Uh, all these um, entities on the left are uh, linking to one entity, the concept of Van Gogh. And that's really important to find those concepts in vocabularies or thesauris. And that's where the network of terms comes into play. With it, we want to uh, build also a, a knowledge graph. Where can we find works from this artist? And where can we find this data? That's wh where the dataset register, which I presented this morning, comes into play. So our roadmap for the discovery infrastructure um, begins at the top with the web portals, uh, which we want to be able to be powered by knowledge graphs. Knowledge graphs, uh, uh, which uh, get their data from the network of terms and the data set register. But of course, data at the source, so the, the collection management systems are really important. There, the users have to use terms, vocabularies, sorry. Uh, so we don't have any strings, but really links. But looking at those collection systems, there are uh, a lot of vocabularies, the salary, uh, terms, sources. So the, the way it was, what there are, uh, as a collection uh, management system, you had to make uh, links to all these sources. That, that, that's a lot of work. Uh, should you harvest each of them, or can you use live APIs for that? Uh, a vendor has to uh, support multiple protocols, uh, multiple data models. So there's a, a range of complexity and maintenance issues with this solution. With the network of terms, it's more like a layer in between. Uh, so it's a tool uh, for collection management system. It's one specific uh, API, which can be called, and the network of terms uh, does the querying of the sources behind it, the, the ones that the institution wants to query. Uh, so the interface from the collection management system 
to the nephrotherms is standardized on SCOS. And um, the, the API uh, that, that's used is GraphQL. That's uh, the one that Facebook all, uh, also introduced. And at the, the, the other side, the network of terms is querying all the sources uh, using Sparkle. But in the process, um, uh, translating and transforming the data so the end user in the collection management system get one view of the results. Technically, we use a Communica uh, platform to uh, do these kinds of uh, transformations and calls to the other sources. So within the heritage views, there are a lot of uh, sources that can be used and are already now available within the network of terms. Uh, some international, some uh, national, some even regional. Um, about places, about persons, about subjects. Um, um, Willem uh, will go into the GTAA, the Common Vocabulary of Audiovisual Design, I think. Uh, so that's the left bottom part, so he will go in much more detail. But these are all the, the, the term sources which are available to the uh, users. So there's, it's a tool for uh, vendors to include it in their collection management system. So this is a view of the GraphQL uh, interface. So programmers can really easy query the network of terms. Of course, to make it more uh, lively, we also built a demonstrator for this product. And there you can just uh, look up in, in your browser specific term, specify which uh, source you want to query, hit the search button, uh, this website is in English available, uh, and the sources are queried. This is done this, uh, in a distributed, federated way. So the real sources are queried. There's no caching or uh, looking up in an uh, aggregated database or something like that. Real distributed queries. One of the features uh, that's uh, new uh, to the uh, network of terms is that you also have a reconciliation API. So if you're using a product like OpenRefine, you can reconcile your, uh, your data set to one of the sources within the network of terms. Uh, so all these Dutch uh, sources are now uh, available within OpenRefine. Some didn't have a uh, reconciliation API and Thanks to the uh, network of terms, now they do have uh, this reconciliation API feature. The network of terms is a technical product. All of, of our products within the, the Heritage Network is open source and available on GitHub. Uh, so anyone can uh, start up their own network of terms using this technology. It's just defining within a data catalog what are the sources, what are the Sparkle queries which have to be fired, and you have your own network of terms. There are several uh, vendors who have uh, already implemented uh, this API to the network of terms. So uh, a, a lot of organizations can already use uh, this functionality, but not all organizations are using it yet because using terms within a collection management system is something the organization has to decide, has to understand why it helps them to get better quality and to become a part of the heritage network. This product is um, uh, maintained and promoted by the Cultural Heritage Agency in the Netherlands. So it's already, um, well, developed, really developed. So I'd like to give the, word and the mic to Willem, who's going to talk about one of these uh, term sources. Thanks, Bob. Um, hello, I'm Willem Melder from the <coughs> Netherlands Institute of Sanity. Um, <coughs> Bob talked about uh, the network of terms uh, being unlike collaborative effort from uh, the, the Heritage Network. Our organization, Sound Vision, is one of the uh, partners in the network and also one of the providers of a terminology source. Um, the GTAA, the Common Thesaurus for Audiovisual Archives. Um, and therefore, 
we'll talk a little bit on uh, <coughs> how we connected our uh, infrastructure uh, to to the network of those. So um, <coughs> first of all, show a slide that uh, was shown this morning as well, just to uh, introduce a little bit um, what we're talking about uh, when we're talking about the collection of sound and vision. Of course, the thesaurus um, uh, in itself yeah, can be interesting, but it, it, it's related to a collection, and the collection is more interesting than the thesaurus in itself. Uh, our collection is about uh, radio, television broadcasts in the Netherlands from a uh, yeah, very early stage. <coughs> there are all kinds of uh, specific uh, collections in this as well, during the war, um, early uh, um, yeah, polygon journals, the early um, broadcast news uh, bef before there was television. It's all in the archive and there are all kinds of um, uh, contextual uh, collections as well, about books, scripts, costumes, uh, Objects like the first uh, machine uh, in the Netherlands that, that did a radio broadcast. So, uh, well, all kinds of uh, stuff that has to do with uh, uh, audiovisual heritage in the Netherlands. Uh, in total, uh, when talking about the audiovisual part being like playable, uh, playable media, it's Probably more than the, than the eight hundred thousand hours that is uh, this uh, slide, uh, <coughs> but uh, then you have an idea of uh, how many hours it, uh, it is, how large the archive is. So um, this uh, this slide is uh, showing um, all the collections at the bottom. So yeah, uh, they are grouped as as media. And they're managed in a, a collection management system uh, at the top. Um, it's called DAM, standing for Digital Audiovisual Archive in the Netherlands. And it's like a, a customized uh, uh, product from a party called VizRT. And the product is Viz1, and it's completely um, yeah, customized for our uh, specific uh, use case. And so, it contains all the objects, all the digital objects, including technical uh, metadata, of course, descriptive metadata, which is what we're talking about when we're talking about terms and um, <coughs> and the network of terms. So the collection management system has all kinds of metadata, also uh, persons that are in the news or persons that have created some uh, uh, some object. Uh, genres, names, etc. And these come all from uh, a control vocabulary. Uh, and that, uh, that system is um, um, in use only for like a year. So before we started using this one, it's called uh, Just Scos, um, and it's created by Maya. That's, that's one of the parties that's also uh, working together with the uh, uh, these are team guys to, to build a collection management system. Um, they built a just cost uh, system uh, because before that we had a, like a, an open source uh, editor uh, for uh, uh, for Tassalus management, vocabulary management. Uh, that was quite a good product in the sense that it was uh, it had a lot of functionality. Um, a lot of services on top of it, and we could do uh, editing and management of uh, of the of the lists, uh, and it also um, interacted uh, with the collection management system. But the developer base was uh, a bit too uh, too uh, low, so there were not very ma many maintainers, not very many organizations using it. Components uh, began to run out of life. Uh, and at some point, uh, we had to decide, well, uh, we're going to rebuild it. Uh, so, um, the, um, the part that's shown here, that's actually the core, and in itself, it, yeah, you cannot interact with it from the outside world. It also doesn't 
provide the concepts that are represented in it to the outside world or to the web. So for that, we had to um, build an additional layer. Um, and that's the GTA service layer. Um, we have like a web page describing all the APIs that are available on that uh, service layer. Um, and they are they're actually mimicking the, the functionalities and the services that we used to have in the, in the earlier platform. So there was backwards compatibility. Um, but we added uh, Sparkle. Uh, specifically for being able to provide the network of terms with uh, with an interface to to query. Uh, so um, this is also a custom uh, custom build, and it uses open source components for uh, storing all the uh, all the concepts in it. So just the concepts are all SCOS based uh, concepts like open standard. And we're storing everything in, uh, in the Apache Yena um, uh, Drupal store. It's also open source. And I forgot to mention that also the GTA in itself is an open licensed uh, data set. So it's open database license, meaning that it can be used and reused uh, with uh, attrib attribution and sharing alike. Uh, and I think SoundVision. Uh, uh, does that because of uh, when you share uh, your terms and people start using them, it, it can start to grow. And there are a couple of other institutes that are using uh, uh, the GTA to describe their collections. Uh, and in the end, that's that's the whole idea. If we start sharing terms, then it will be more easy to uh, interact uh, or to, to make collections interoperable, to connect collections via shared terms. Um, so, uh, one more slide um, about how we did manage to uh, connect the service layer to the, the network of terms. So on, on top you have the, the ALMA system that was on the previous slide as well. You see the service layer in between. Data is actually uh, synchronized between those two. Um, and on, in, in, in the service layer, we also provide um, the, like the identifiers to the outside world. And uh, also the search uh, facilities for the outside world. Uh, so we provided a query so that the network of terms could uh, uh, look up, uh, uh, do the federated search as uh, Bob described, um, or distributed uh, search, he said. Um, then it turned out that in itself the Apache Yena was not, not uh, uh, fast enough, the performance was not good enough because we had so many labels uh, for terms, like well, uh, maybe up to a million, and uh, uh, we got timeouts. So then we need to, uh, to add an additional uh, Lucene plugin for, uh, for, the, um, uh, for the Spark endpoint. And that, that really uh, was not that uh, difficult and it speeded up performance uh, immense. So now you have like, uh, you can search immediately uh, while you had to wait sometimes for 30 seconds uh, in the earlier situation. So that was one of the things that uh, we very recently uh, did to improve the performance. Um, <coughs> and we now go to the demonstrator that, uh, that Bob also uh, showed. You can, well, select one of the terminology sources from the GTA. Uh, well, here, search term is Rutter. You can search for persons uh, with the name Rutter. And uh, the results will be there. There are still some things that we can improve from our side or maybe Things that can be improved from the, from the side of the network of terms. These are details, and we, are, we will step, step by step uh, be working on them. Um, so, yeah, to wrap it up, uh, we use several open source components. Um, 
we are connected now and we hope that other institutions will uh, um, find our terms and use them in their terminal, uh, in their collection systems. Uh, you can try it out yourself. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Maybe uh, there are some questions. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, applause. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs>